Wow, the prices in that antique shop were crazy. If anyone is telling you you're selling stuff for too expensive on eBay, take them down that shop. Hey, still managed to pick up a couple of bits and we should be making some profit when I resell them on eBay. Hey guys, Ian, the master of pieces here. I'm a part-time eBay reseller and in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Now, usually on a Wednesday, I head to the charity shop and look for loads of stuff to resell on eBay for profit, but today, I fancy trying out an antique shop. Now, what's caught my eye about this one in particular is, yeah, they sell all the usual antique type stuff, but they do retro and vintage clothing, and more importantly, retro toys. So it's right up my street. So I'm gonna see if I can actually find some bargains in there some, and find some stuff I can resell on eBay. But before we head to the antique shop, let's see what's sold on eBay Monday and Tuesday. So let's run through what's sold Monday and Tuesday on eBay this week. I've sold seven things in total, and that's the first one there. Now remember a couple of videos ago, I told you about the brand Necker. Well, I sold this Edward Cullen off of Twilight. It is boxed, I mean just about, sealed, by that little piece of sellotape, again, just about. But look, this is absolutely battered, isn't it? Very much pre-owned, it is missing a little shield up there, and that obviously has really hampered the price. I paid 50 pence for this one, and I took an offer actually, it's gone for nine pounds all in. Now sealed in good condition, you're looking for about 18 to 20 pounds maybe. So yeah, I wasn't gonna get much more for that. Next up, we've got two vintage board games. Let's just crouch down here, because there's the top one, Stay Alive. And I've only just sold this one, actually. The last one I sold went for £11 plus postage. I paid £2 for this one. Remember, MB Games. Always check out the old MB Games, because you never know, you might be surprised. And the other board game I sold, right, is this game down here. It's called Booby Trap, and this is a little beauty. This is by Parker Brothers. There's a little sign there. Now the thing to look out with this, this is mega old, right? Is it does it have all the pieces? And also it's got a little spring in there. Does that spring still work? What a lovely box though, eh? All right, let's bring it over here because I paid two pounds for this in the charity shop. And these have both gone to the same buyer. So that's four pounds I've paid. They've sold for 40 pounds all in. Nice little sale. Love vintage board games. Right, next up, let's go down here. and. I know it's in that carrier bag because I've literally only just been sorting these out. These are called, let's get on the table, Matchbox Connectables. And what they are, these were from the 90s. And there was a range of Matchbox cars and vehicles, you know, helicopters, planes, that you could just clip together. They had all these little universal con connectors so you could make massive long vehicles. Now, there's a fair few in there, right? I paid five pounds and they've gone for 20 pounds plus postage. So a nice quick sale. They've gone within a fortnight and actually I've got another box of them there. So that should be another nice sale too. Right, let's go up and have a look in the Teddy's box because we sold that Zebra Fuggler. Check this guy out. I got this one for, um, as part of the swap I did with Connor, the Welsh poke picker. Look at that, it is the most ugly thing, but these are really collectible. Now this one has gone for 12 pounds plus postage, and actually that's probably the cheapest one up, up on eBay. If you've got the box for that one, brand new, you're looking mid 20s, somewhere like that. Right, two more sales to go, and we've sold a fair, a, a fair, a pair of football boots. And it's these ones here. These are the Adidas Breditos I got last charity shop haul. Paid a pound 50 for them. Great condition, but you find that with kids' football boots anyway. Size UK1, they've gone for six pounds plus postage. Not a massive markup, but a nice quick sale. And we'll put them down for now because the last sale is a ton of Scale Electrics track. I sold my final straight pieces. I think there's only, oh, there might only be five actually. I've still got the curves to go. But those five straight Scale Electrics pieces has gone for eight pounds plus postage. Nice and easy to pack, stick them in a in, in, in a box and they'll be on their way. So all in all, seven pretty decent sales. Not a bad start to the week, really. Now, how could I have forgotten about these? 
check these out. What we've got here are some old school Sweet Valley High books and you need to be looking out for these. These are just amazing sellers. Now I've bought 30 of them, right, for a tenner. So I'm in 30 pence each. And the way I'm selling these off is I've put them in consecutive orders. So I've made little bundles, but there were 13 of them that just didn't fit in with kind of any of the other numbers. Look at that cover there. And those 13, I did put as one lot, and that has gone for 20 pounds all in. So those 13, look at that. Those 13 have paid for the whole bundle. Love it. So it's Wednesday, and usually on Wednesday, what I do is go to the charity shops, but today I've had to drop my car in to get an MOT. So no charity shopping today. And actually the MOT center is in the middle of nowhere. It's in the, it's in the middle of a big industrial estate, but there is this strange antique kind of warehouse place. I'm not really sure what it is. I've, I, have, I have given it a Google and there seems to be lots of different pop-up shops, furniture, old vintage clothing, vintage toys. Let's go in, see what we can see. Yeah, so we've just seen that jigsaw there. Let's have a quick look at sold listings. Yep, they are selling it for a fiver. It's bang on, isn't it? So we got lots of box corgi and dinky toys up at the top there. This caught my eye. Look at that Tommy Alien Chase. 49 pounds of his price, bang on. Lots more cars here. Again, all of the prices are as you'd expect few Doctor Who bits at the back there. A couple of Meccano manuals. Star Wars chess set. Lots of Star Wars figures. I might have found something, you know. Check this out, Palatoy on the box. This is a pretty Miss Emma doll. In the box, 18 pounds. Thing is, if that doll doesn't work, you might get your money back. If it does work, you might make some profit. There's no solds and a few listed. <sighs> nah, I think we'll leave it. This is really cool. We've just come downstairs. We're kind of in the basement of the pump house now. Look at that. And there's a selection of retro vintage clothing. Look at this. Here's a little turn up for the books. Tea and coffee prices are pretty decent. Have a look at what we found down here. Look at this. A Teo remote control Porsche 911. Don't know if it's complete. Don't know if it works. 40 pounds. Not worth the risk. Look at these Disney lights here. They're brilliant. And they are 50 quid. Now solds on these. It's there and thereabouts. I mean, some of the listings are up for a much higher condition, just isn't there. Look at some of these trucks here. Wow! Prices are mad though. Look at that Ducati one, 25 quid. Get that for about a tenner on eBay. You know what? I may have actually found some, some nice Spider Man comics there. But check out some of these figures. The prices are okay. But look at this. Look at that Spider-Man there for a fiver. That's worth a go, surely. And at the bottom here, we've got a boxed Power Ranger from Ninja Storm. Ten pounds that one is. Let's give that a crack. So back from the antique warehouse, and yet dried off a little bit as well. I was soaking, wasn't it? Look, 
it wasn't really what I expected. I mean, I didn't go to that place expecting charity shop and boot sale prices. Of course you don't. You, go, you don't go to somewhere like that and expect cheap. But those prices were just crazy. I mean, it was almost as if the sellers had found their item on eBay and tried to price match it against the most expensive listing that they could find. And actually, the condition of a lot of the stuff there wasn't particularly great. So it was just naturally overpriced. And actually, hey, look, a couple of the things, and we've just seen it, they were two, three, four times the price of what you could actually buy the same thing for on eBay. I mean, look at those children's football boots, 35 quid. And that Ducati, like, HGV lorry, two, three, two to three times the price of a current listing. Nuts. And you know what? Actually, when I was, when I was seeing that and checking against sold listings and current listings, it just put a big doubt in my mind. You know, I'm going around, I'm seeing prices. Am I actually believing this? Is this the right value for it? And the more and more time I spent there, right, I did start to get this bit of a like pretentious vibe. And it was almost like a pompousness that because it is a place where there are lots of antiques, people naturally just price their stuff stupidly high just because of what it is. And I can imagine, actually, there will be people and buyers that go in there and just because they're wowed by all the antiques and what it's meant to be, will end up just buying stuff for the price that they, the, the price that it's, it's marked at. You know, people won't go in there and price check it against other sites. You just don't do that. Um, so, yeah, you know, wasn't brilliant. And I don't think I'll be going there anytime soon. But I did actually find two things that I think maybe slip through the cracks and I should hopefully make a bit of profit on. The first one, right, was this Power Rangers Ninja Storm still in box figure. Now, this is from 2003, so it's coming up to 20 years old and it was only, I say only, it was 10 pounds, right? Push the button there, still working, which is great. And actually, there aren't many sold listings. Well, there's certainly not a boxed Red Ranger sold listing. There is an equivalent Blue Ranger that's sold back in January for about £30 plus postage. So I'll be aiming for that for this. So look, it's a bit of profit, isn't it? But this was by far the best thing that I saw in there. Yeah, there was all these amazing, wonderful old things. You know, so much history in there. But this was the best item. <laughs> look at this. We have got a bootleg Spider-Man, and I mean, where do you even start with it? First of all, look, he's like an army sniper Spider-Man with an assault weapon. I mean, who even come up with that? Now, first up, this is, this, is, this is so bootleg. There's no marvel about this whatsoever. You can tell just by the quality of the packaging, the quality of kind of the graphics. That says down there, the special for you of children design. There's a bit of translation er uh, issues going on there. Safe, non-toxic, eco-friendly. I mean, it doesn't look eco-friendly, does it? But if we look at the actual toy itself, look, he's got like a, a little army belt on there with a knife and just loads of little pockets. I mean, the paintwork is all off. Look at his eye there. That silver just doesn't line up with it. If you look actually in there, he's, he's wearing a collar. He's got like a red collar on, so he's, he's almost like, He's almost going out like shooting in the day and then he's partying at night. But I mean, it's, it's the little details, isn't it? Look, the fact that why have they left his hands there? Why hasn't he got his red gloves? Surely if he's firing that assault rifle, he's, he doesn't want to leave traces. He wants to have a bit of gloves. And, um, you know, it's, it's obviously not linked to any movie. I mean, what is it? We've had Spider-Man Homecoming. That's like Spider-Man Homefront, isn't it? But look, all seriousness, five pounds. There's no sold listings, of course there's not. But someone in Canada is trying to sell one of these for 40 quid, and I think there's one being sold in Turkey. Someone's trying to get 20 odd quid. Either way, that has got to be worth. If you're a Spider-Man or like a general Marvel collector, that's got to go into your collection, even if it's even though it's knockoff. That's got to be worth 15 to 20 quid, surely. And that actually that made the whole trip to the antique shop worthwhile. Cool, right. So that's, that, that was it. That's the only two things I picked up. I spent about two and a half hours there. And actually you could see some of the people when I was shopping because I did have my son there and he was going around. They were all so nervous that he was going to pick some up and break some up. So hey, we, we had a fair bit of fun. Right, let's find out what sold on eBay on Wednesday to wrap up the video. 
So sales for me on eBay at the minute are definitely following a trend. I'm not selling many big individual items or high profit items. I'm selling lots of small profit items, but if you add it all together, it does make a nice healthy profit at the end of the day. So these next four items, right? They've gone for either nine or 10 pounds all in each. So first step, we've got this Orlando Magic baseball cap. It's one of the 59.50 ones with the sticker on. I paid a couple of quid at the boot sale, so yeah. That's sold within a week, so not too bad. Now these, or this one in particular, has taken forever to sell. I bought five of these kind of Foster's trays. You put your um, you put your pint glasses in there. Now I paid a pound each, so not too bad. If that's flipped into ten pounds, yes, it's taken six months to do it, and I've still got another four on the shelf. But yeah, should be pretty easy to pack. I might pack it in like a pizza box. It's got that vibe, isn't it? These I cannot believe have sold. And I picked these up at the boot sale last week as well, didn't I? It's these old school Nike Air trainers and they are just battered. Now, I don't think they got much life left. Look, that top's coming off there. At the back, that the sole is coming away. If I was to pull that, that would completely come off. But I've obviously made that really clear in the listing. I actually wrote damaged in big capital letters with asterisks either side of the, of the damage, just to make people aware. But they have sold within three hours for about a tenner and I paid a pound. So yeah, bit of profit. And the final like low value one is this Spencer Trackmaster train. And this has been hanging around for months. Not a particularly popular Trackmaster train I've found, uh, but what makes this one different and stand out is it does have unique markings on it. It's not your conventional Spencer, but even so that's taken ages and ages to sell. So yeah, they aren't too glamorous, are they? But you add that up and yeah, it's been a pretty good day. And it was actually topped off, right? Because I did sell this and this was quite a nice sale. It's this Sennheiser pair of headphones, brand new. Um, what's the model number? HD202. I mean, is anyone actually interested in that type of information, that depth? Don't know. Either way, paid four pounds. Those are gone for 25 pound 50 plus postage. Random number I know, but there is someone on eBay that are selling these brand new and he's just got a repeat listing on there and with loads and loads of quantity. Um, and he's selling this for 30 pounds all in and they do seem to be shifting. So all I did was knock 50p or a pound off of that price to make sure that people are looking at mine before his and buying mine, more importantly, before his. So all in all, Wednesday's not been too bad. So guys, I do really hope you enjoyed this video. I am trying to mix my videos up a little bit you know, we're going to charity shops, boot sales, antiques places. I'm, I'm mixing up the way that I film these things. So if you are enjoying the videos, let me know. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll catch up with you in the next one. See you guys. Bye-bye.